Chapter 12, Patterning and Hatching. This chapter reviews the hatching and patterning tools with special consideration given to controlling the display, patterning, and methods of patterning. Patterning adds texture and material identity to designs, such as concrete or in maps, uh, marshes, and woodlands. There's a lot of different ways to create hatches or patterns in a design, and we're going to cover those tools in this chapter. There is, of course, hatching, cross-hatching, which I only recently realized was something different than just hatching, and, of course, patterning, where we will insert a pattern cell repetitiously to fill the area. Now, speaking of controlling the display, patterns are a view attribute. You can turn on and off patterns. For the purpose of this chapter, we will turn on the patterns in the view attributes. And I've opened the Patterns Task Toolbox that is accessible from the Drawing Task under the F.Plans Development Task. Open Patterns as Toolbox. And just like all toolboxes, you can right click and select which tools you'd like to show. So I've already mentioned there's hatching, cross hatching, patterning. There's the Show Pattern Attributes tool, which will display the pattern attributes in the status bar. There's the Match Pattern Attributes tool. Are you seeing a pattern here? Ha! Huh. It's just like the previous tools with the Match Attributes and Identify Attributes. Change Pattern, just like the Change Attributes tool or the Change Text Attributes tool. And Delete Pattern, which will remove a pattern from a shape. So if we select any of these tools from the Patterns toolbox, we're going to have a number of settings. The Select Element or Pattern by Element setting allows you to select the boundary of the element to put the pattern in. Flood allows you to select the open area inside the element. And just like the, um, the Fill tool or the Create Region tool that we used previously, there's a Union, Intersection, and Difference. There's the Spacing, which is for the hatch area, the spacing between the lines. It is able to be locked with annotation lock so that it will behave according to the scale. I'm right now sort of designing at a 40 scale just because I'm probably going to cut some 40 scale sheets later on so I'm entering that pattern now or that scale now. This is the angle at which those hash patterns are going. So, For example, nice 45 degree angle, 15 degree angle, The tolerance, of course, is the maximum distance between a curved element and the approximating line segment. So right now we're, we're designing a, a square which doesn't have any curved elements, so that's not uh, that important. Associative boundary. I currently have it set for associative boundary, and what that means is that the hatching pattern is attached to that boundary. It's part of that boundary. It's associated with the boundary. If I uncheck, you'll see the pattern is individual lines. It's not associative. And the other option is associative region boundary. And that means that there's a separate boundary. They do move with it, but you can remove the, the hatching from that region. And of course, that's the, uh, when it goes all dashed line like that, that's showing that the lines have been disassociated from their associative element. So for this purpose, I'm going to leave the settings for just associative pattern. You can also check the box for snappable pattern, whether you want the pattern to be able to be snapped to or not. For the purpose of what we're doing, if we had like a concrete pattern or even the hatching and cross hatching, you wouldn't necessarily want it to be snappable because it's not a physical object that you'd want to design anything relative to. You know, and adding too many extra snap points to your design might make things a little complicated to figure out what you're actually trying to snap to. So I'm not going to check that. So we do have flood fill, and flood fill has the option to ignore interior shapes, locate interior shapes, identify alternating alternating interior shapes, which we mentioned, same with the create region, and to locate interior text. Okay. So that's hatching. Hatching is just one-way lines. Cross-hatching is the same tool except with 
two, uh, well, it's, it's like that. You got two lines. Let's change up uh, what's going on here. See that scale is going to be multiplied by 40 since we're at a drawing scale of 40. But there's cross hatching. It's intersecting lines. And with the cross hatching, you can have two different spacings and two different angles. You notice that was definitely two different angles as opposed to 45 and negative 45, which would give us a perfect little lattice cross hatching. You can change the angle here. And just like the other one, there's a tolerance for curved elements, associative pattern, associative re region boundary, and whether you want it to be snappable. The next tool is the pattern area, and you can do this from a cell. We talked about cells earlier and pattern cells. So let me show you what's going to happen. We've seen what uh, happens when you try to do a placement cell. Here's the pattern cell. You click the little browse cells. We're going to select a landscape pattern because they do have plenty of patterns in here. If I can find one, like a concrete pattern from cell, and you have to click on pattern. If you double click it, it's going to switch you to the place cell tool and put that as the placement cell. So we want to click the pattern button, and then we can just dismiss this dialog. You'll notice it has populated that right there. Um, this is going to be at a scale of, leaving it at 1 is going to mean it's multiplied by the annotation scale. So there's what a 40 scale pattern would look like. It would look good printed out on a 40 scale sheet. You can change the row spacing and column spacing. In this case, because we want the pattern to tile really well, we're going to set that for 0 column spacing and 0 row spacing. And then you can shift the angle of the pattern. You may not really be able to notice that. If you're really looking at the screen, you can tell that those tiles are at a 45 degree angle now. Once again, associative pattern is an option, associative region boundary, whether it's snappable, which would be kind of weird with a concrete pattern like that, and then true scale, which is one of those functions of the cells that puts them at the scale you're actually placing it at. In addition to the normal settings that the hatching has, there's an option to pattern by points, and that means you're drawing your own shape and then it's patterning it. And there's an option right here to pattern by fence. You'd have to have an active fence before that option lights up. So you see now that option's lit up and we can enter a data point and pattern by fence. And it does create that associative region boundary with that pattern. Identify pattern tool. You can see pattern concrete pattern angle of 45, pattern scale of 1, and click on that and you've copied those attributes and this is of course the change pattern attributes tool and delete pattern. Okay, great, so let's do some exercises then, right? Exercise 12.1, hatch area. Okay, we're going to open the file DSGN RDO1 if it's not already open and we're going to locate a hatching area. The hatching area is near station 231, so if you're not quite sure where you are, simply go to the find and replace text, enter 231, and hit find, and it's going to fly you to this area right here. Okay, see this shape right here? We're going to work with this shape right here. Now, um, there's a lot of stuff in the way. A lot of line work. So once again, we're going to right press on the reset button and select turn off level by element. And let's just get rid of anything that's kind of getting in our way here. Like this, this, and this, and this, and that thing, and whatever that is. Oh, that's, ha, huh, that's the number that's, uh, well, that was the number that was designating the area that we're working in. Area number one. First step is we're going to go to the view attributes and make sure that patterns is turned on. It should be turned on, but double check. Go to your view attributes up at the top left corner of your view window and make sure that patterns is turned on. Okay, so this is apparently a saw cut and remove existing pavement area. And we're going to put a hatching area in it. We've already set our spacing to 0.1 because that's going to be multiplied by our annotation scale of 40. Our angle is 45, tolerance is 0, 
and let's go ahead and make that an associate pattern. And we're doing this by element. So all you have to do is select the boundary element and then enter a data point anywhere on the screen. And there's your hatching. Now, if you think that that's maybe too far apart and that at larger scales it's going to disappear, you can reduce that spacing manually. So let's make that like 0.05 and that does get multiplied by your annotation scale. Select the boundary again, enter a data point. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Let's go with that. And we're going to use the remove pattern tool because our project manager just told us that we need to cross hatch that and not just hatch that. So let's set both of these distances for 0.05 spacing and Let's set the angle for 65 and negative 65. And we'll use the flood area this time, which means all you have to do is enter a data point inside. And it's selected some odd boundary that I don't like, so I'm going to right press again, right click. Enter data point. And uh, I don't like this boundary that it's selected, so I'm going to reset and enter another data point, there appears to be an invisible line that's getting picked up by this area. So once again, we're going to do this by element. Click the boundary, and the hatch pattern is there. Cross hatch pattern, there's a difference. Hatching is just one line, cross hatching is two lines. So here we are, this island right here is exactly what I'd like to fill with a concrete pattern. So let's go turn off these reference files here. I'm gonna turn off this is the reference file display. We'll talk about this in a couple more chapters, but all you need to know is access the references dialog, scroll all the way to the right, look for the column that has the little window, and uncheck all these boxes. There we go. That isolates our island nicely so we can see it fairly clearly. We're going to select the pattern area tool. Let's use flood fill this time. We're doing the pattern definition from cell and selecting the little spyglass here. In the cell library, we select File and Landscape Cell. It's about halfway down that menu. Now let's look for Pattern Concrete 1. They are alphabetized. There's Pattern Concrete 1, and then select the Pattern button. You see it populated over here? I'm going to go with the Pattern Scale of 1, Row Spacing 0, 0, Angle of 45 sounds good to me. And because we're using a flood fill instead of an element, we click inside the boundary, and then we can enter a data point anywhere we'd like. And that is the end of Chapter 12, Patterning and Hatching.